I sat down at mile 70, and at this time I was married. And I, I look at my wife and I was like, um, I'm, I'm messed up bad. So I literally start to turn white. And when a black guy turns white, you're pretty <laughs> fucked up. Here I am, I'm all fucked up in this chair. I'm at mile 70, they got 30 fucking miles to go. I'm jacked up. I gotta go to the bathroom, and the, and the bathroom's like 20 feet from me. It's a porta potty. I can't get out of the fucking chair. So I'm peeing blood down my leg, pooping up my fucking pack. And I got 30 miles to go. And I'm, I can't stand up because my, my blood pressure's all messed up. I've been in three hell weeks, ranger school, overcome so many obstacles in my life. This last 30 miles of this race is when I realized a human being is not so human anymore. We have the ability to go in such a space. If you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. And this 30 miles was the life-changing moment. I was out of it. I was in the worst pain in my entire life. I was, to me, on the brink of death. And I was able to chunk this 30 damn miles into small pieces. I was so driven, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say motivated, because motivation is crap. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. So I sat in this chair and I was so driven to succeed in this race. And, it, and at this time, everybody goes, were you thinking about the guys that died? And I'm not gonna lie to you, I wasn't. This became a personal thing. This became me against this race, me against the kids that called me nigger, me against me. It, it, it just became something that I took so, so violently personal. And I broke this thing down into small pieces. I said, okay, I gotta get nutrition. I gotta be able to stand up before I can get off this curb and get off this chair and be able to go 30 miles. So I went through all these small steps and I, I was able to stand up. And then from standing up, I was literally walking around with my wife at the time. And she goes, you're not gonna make the time. She goes, you're, I mean, you're, you're walking like 30 some minute miles. I got to mile 81. And the second she said that I'm not gonna make the time, I ran the last 19 miles non-stop and I can show you right now when we get done with this matter of fact I'm going to show you right now this was years ago and I had to put compression tape on my Whoa. ankle and I had so this was years ago I had literally the size of half dollars I had to get compression tape and I taped up my ankles and I taped up my feet and that's how I got through that race. And, and people may listen to this and say, this guy is sadistic, he's crazy, he's... No, if you know how I came up, you realize I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. That's all it is. I'm very fortunate that I grew up in a time when there was no phones and there was no social media. And I suggest, yes, I'm on social media on a very limited basis because I have a story to tell. And it's a great platform. Use it as a platform, don't use it as your life. My biggest advice to give everybody in the world is like I say, we live in an external world. Everything is, is you gotta see it, touch it, it's, it's, it's external. If you can for the rest of your life, live inside of yourself. Stop listening to people who are calling you fat, nigger, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you gotta flush it out. You gotta just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You gotta take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you gotta be quiet. Shut the fuck up, go in a room, stop talking, search your soul, search your mind, search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you gotta go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching always asking the question, why? I'm deep in the cookie jar, and the cookie jar is something that I've made up of all the failures of my life, all the things that I was, I failed and I went back, I failed and I went back and I finally succeeded. All the things that kicked my ass, I put them all in the cookie jar, because at times of hell, 
even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test. It's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks. I take a second, I take the one second decision. I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, motherfucker, you went, you were in three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy died and killed us so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. You are. I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember who the fuck I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood down my leg, shin splint stress fractures, I use all that for motivation versus negativity. I use it for motivation. I, I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You are. You got to be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, he's not going to stop. And that's, I took all the negative things. I need to go to the hospital, this and that. And I used it all. Who the hell could even get on that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stress fractures up? You did. All those things I used for motivation. I'm the happiest man on the planet Earth. So people may take this, and as so many people do, we live in a very weakened society. So when they hear a throwback guy like me from back in the ancient days of, <laughs> of Garanimals, they often think this guy is just whatever. So if you think that I'm some unhappy guy, you're wrong. Having lived the life I've lived and seeing the other side, not being afraid to attack what was in front of me has made me happy. We all have a cookie jar and we all have a jar of fuck. It's a jar of fuck, man, where shit just, it just ain't going right. And in Hell Week, what they do in Hell Week, because this is where I really went to the dark side. What they do in Hell Week is they design Hell Week to find your flaws. And they do a really good job of that. It's 130 hours of continuous training. You may get two hours of sleep. And they beat the shit out of you and find everything wrong with your mentality. And then they start Hell Week. And that's the beauty of it. And for me, I'm not some not, you know, nasty God-given guy. You know, I, I don't have a great bit of talent in anything. So what got me through horrible times was the dark side, was I created, my name is David Goggins. I created Goggins. Goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of him.